Drop Nation, what it do? What it do? What it do? Oh man, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like a rock star today, man. Feeling like a rock star, but you know what, man? I went to look at my Preston John book, man. Love to, love to the Battle family. You know what I mean? I've been trying to let my little homies, you know, do some reading, man. But somebody done took a bite out my book, dog. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it, man. No, don't worry, Ty. I'm going to fix it. Sister Ty, calm down. I'm going to fix it, man. But damn, damn, damn. It's going to be some furniture moving. There's going to be some furniture moving around here. All right, man. What it do, man? Shabbat Shalom. <gasps> Wow, blow it down, higher Mart style, man. Love to the Guardian, love to higher Mart, man. Get in that classroom. Love to the Ether Squad. You know we, you know we busy. You know what I'm saying. You know we live every night, man. Stop playing. We back, man. Press the John. Damn, damn, damn. Mm. It's all right, man. I'ma fix it, man. Press the John 37, let go, man. In your face, bone. I'm going to jump right into it, man. Ty Battle actually scanned the joint, you know what I mean? So, holla at Jaguala. Don't holla at koalas, man. Don't holla at koalas. Let go. I'm jumping right in. The beginnings of Press the John. Oh, yeah, by the way, man. Free Feeny. Dragons on the wall. I hop to everybody that's been supporting, man. That drop shot, man. Clicking them links. Keeping the water flowing and keeping the fire burning. Every bit has truly mattered. And we truly appreciate the aha, man. I mean, because this energy is all we got. You know what I mean? So this is what we're doing. We appreciate you. And we know that we got a dragon on the wall. Is it you? Are you the wall of protection? Who is Preston John? Who is the knight? I said, who's the Naga? Remember, man. Remember the picture they got in here. Of the priest king. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There we go. Remember the picture of the priest king. Who is Preston John? So as much as this book has cost, this is a high level academia, all right? We've gotten, uh, you know, we've gotten brothers from, you know what I'm saying, different walks, you know what I'm saying? Whether it be more science temple, whether it be, you know what I'm saying, you know, magic sciences of such and such, I don't know, man, but we getting confirmations all over the place. And you know what I'm saying? That's pretty much what they telling us. It's like, what y'all digging on is, is that real spill that, you know, it's on those other levels, you know what I'm saying? But see, we're not sworn to secrecy. We're not sworn to keep secrets from our own tribe, from our own brothers. We're, we're on that Daniel 12, man. We're on that body bag, Daniel. It's getting furniture moving around here, man. Down, down. All right, man. Look, man, so stay focused, man. You are the water. You are the substance. You are the flow. You continue. So these aren't secrets to us. This is a family, a family history, and we're sharing it because it's, it's time for the secrets to be done because the spell has to be done in order for the spell to break. We of Daniel 12, when the books are being unsealed, we must, we must surf the wave. We must teach. We are the Khans. You know what I'm saying? We are the Khan dynasty. So we're the ones to teach. Let go. Let go. Who is Preston John? Oh, it's a beautiful California day. All praise. Our framer and shaper. All praise. Our... <gasps> Wow! Let go.
Every breath you take is the creator. There ain't no debate about breath. When you take a breath, that is the ha. That's the It's a feminine. It's the inhale. The exhale is the masculine. It's the wah. It's that fire, nigga. It's that fire, nigga. But before the dragon can breathe that fire, you gotta take that breath, man. Take his mama in. Take that ruach, right? The, the spirit, the soul, right? The ruach. You gotta take your mama in. You gotta take wisdom in, right? That wah. Wow, every time you breathe, you're saying the Creator's name, right? So when the Creator tells you not to take His name in vain, He's saying don't take your own breath in vain. Don't take your own life in vain. Without breath, you have no life. Don't turn your life into vanity. I mean, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Don't don't disregard me, but damn it, you disregarding yourself, man. Ain't that how pops will talk to you? Like, oh, okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, you definitely disrespecting the house, so you definitely going to get that work. But really, man, I want you to know that you're disrespecting yourself, man. You're disrespecting your... <gasps> wow, you're disrespecting your own breath, man. Every breath is the creator. Every breath you take is life. What is Eve but life, right? Eve, hawa, 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 life. We're talking life, man. What's more life than a breath? So it's not an external ha or hey or ya. It's a <gasps> on that fifth letter of Hebrew, you see Big Mama with her arms raised high. Big Mama like this. Come on, baby. Now you, you don't walk through the door, the dial, the dial it. You started with that strong power, that L, that Aleph, right? Going into the tent. Most I go into you, you get fired up. Now you're ready to move. You start walking. You got your gom, your gimel, right? That's the one, two, three letters of the Picto Hebrew. Then you get to letter number four, which is the door. Letter number four is the door, man. We walk through that door, that portal. We like, what it do? Who's meeting us on the other side? Big mama. Mama with her arms open wide. And you say, <gasps> That's what happens when you walk through the port. It's a revelation. It's you got life. That's the career. Now what happens next? That sixth letter, that sixth letter is that wow, that fire come out. That foundation, that tip peg, right? That that foundation. That security. So I'm just taking the time to remind you, because we're getting priestly. It's all about Preston John. It's all about Preston John. I'm, 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 I'm going to get it fixed, huh? I'm going to get it fixed. Don't even trip. But real talk. So when you got that wah, you got that ha. Well, wah. You know, you got your fire coming from coming from your soul, right? You got that fire, that ignition, that carbon, right? You got that carbon. Then you get your seventh letter, which is your rest, your zon. And it's really your weapon. You know what I mean? After you done chose up. Big Mama has given you life. Your father has given you the vibration, the wah, the foundation. So you got that fifth and sixth letter, which is a secure breath. It's a breath of safety. It's a breath of foundation. It's a breath of security. That's why we say, wah, at Drop Nation. We just follow the Picto Paleo. And a, ch a child can follow that. So we are children. And you get your zon, you get your rest, you get your cutoff day, you get your Shabbat, you get your separation, you get your weapon, right? You got your weaponry, you know what I'm saying? You ready to go. You got your bow, you got your bow, all right? You ready? You got your sword, you got your Excalibur. Hold on, man. You got your Excalibur, man. All right, this is my Excalibur, man. This is my copper vessel, man, all right? Amazon, about, I don't know, like 30 bucks. I know I could do better, you know. I want like, I, I want to find like one, you know what I mean, from like a, some cave or something. I want to find a real copper vessel. This is cool. This is cool. It's better than the plastic. Amazon got the drop though. Let's go. Read it. Pause it. Read it. Pause it. And remember who we're talking about. 
and remember what we talk about. Let's go. In 1122, a mysterious man calling himself John, Patriarch of the Indians. Preston John is the Patriarch of the Indians. Who's the Indians? Pause it. Read it. This ain't no play play, man. This is Preston John 37. Damn. 37, man. I mean, we're just doing our thizzle. We do press the hours, you know what I'm saying? You know, multiple times a week, man. So, you know, we're on like Preston, probably the same thing press the hour 37 by now so we got 37 hours of press the hour live in the ether at 432thedrop.com man enjoy the ether enjoy the flow love to all my wave surfers man taking that surf the wave challenge man tell a friend man just just trust me look man surf the wave for five nights a week just one week five minutes go in there for five minutes five nights even on the replay and just tell us how you feel. Go in the drop, drop, chatter. Chat, chat, chatter. And tell us how you feel. Love to my chatter box. What it do? In 1122, a mysterious man calling himself John, patriarch of the Indians, appeared in Rome and narrated before Pope Calix, Calixtus II stories of marvels and miracles which took place in his homeland. So you heard it right. This Negro King is who they're all searching for in 1122. And apparently he has a meeting with the Pope. Now the Pope in 1122 is of course a brother. So it's more of a tribal meeting, you know, more of a tribal checkup, you know, check in. What's popping with you? We got the marbles. We got the drop. I am the king. I represent all the Indians. I am David. I am the priest. Let's go. So he told him the marvels and the miracles which took place in his homeland, especially in connection with St. Thomas, who in tradition was supposed to have converted, have converted India. <laughs> so, you know, that's their Christian spin on this Thomas, but we got another spin on Thomas. 20 years later, when a tremendous battle took place in the Far East, all right, 20 years later, so this 1122, that must be what, 1140, all right. Okay, they say 1141, the Battle of Katwan near Samark, Samark land, or Samarkand. Europeans would cast their mind back to this earlier John. In reality, the battle was between a Mongol warlord by the name of Yelu, Yelu Dashi and the leader of the Muslim world. So they're saying in reality, this is what they're saying, this is the battle that took place in 1141. This is real spill, real history, real story, all right? 1141, there was a Naga War. I need you to get it because they've done so much brainwashing every time I say David, you think of a, of a white man or, or something that's not you. When I say Preston John, you don't think that should be included in Black History Month, huh? It's damn near the only thing that should be included, if you understood and overstood 
the key to your salvation is being priestly. When Hosea 3 and 5 says the children will return, the children of Israel will return and seek Hawah, seek our creator, seek our Wah. When we return and seek our creator and David, our Khan, our priest king, this is what is prophesied that we return to our creator and we seek David. I'm just talking about David the knight. Where's his sword? Where's his armor? Where's his dragon? Let's go. So the battle that's taking place in 1141, the Europeans would cast their mind back to this earlier John. In reality, the battle was between a Mongol, remember who they're calling Mongols, right? The, the Wang Khans, right? So it's just another title for you warlord by the name of Yalu Dashi. Now we've dug on some Yalu, but you go dig on Yalu and see where you go. Y-E-L-U Dashi. D-A-S-H-I. I already know my sister Jackie Anthony is going to be digging on Yalu Dashi. You already know love and peace to Jackie Anthony, man, for all the drive. So much drive. And I, I respond to your comments. I, you know, I don't have time to check in here like that, but I do respond live in the ether. I'm live every night, man. All right, so, you know, if you drop a comment here, you're waiting for a response, I probably already responded live, you know what I'm saying, on 432 to drop radio, man. So go ahead and dig on it. We are the dragons on the wall. We're talking drop nation. Yeah, you know I mean? Let go. So this Yellow Dashi had a fight, this Naga war against the leader of the Muslim world. Don't that sound like King David? Who's fighting Islam? Who's keeping Gog and Magog in check? Who's fighting the Ishmaelites in Moab in Psalms 83? Who's fighting them? Yellow Dashi, huh? Okay. So he's fighting the Sultan, Sanjar, who was utterly defeated. Crusaders in the Holy Land interpreted this victorious Mongol warlord to be a mighty Christian king. They interpreted... He wasn't no Christian. He wasn't no Christian. He's a knight, man. He wasn't no Christian. He's a Naga. That cross don't mean Christ. That cross don't mean Christ. It means the intersection. It means the point, the target. If you extend your perspective of that cross or any cross and you fade out you're gonna see more you're just gonna see nothing but lines and intersect you're gonna see a grid of lines with a bunch of intersections now you can zoom in on any of those intersections and you'll find that cross right but that cross is not by itself it's connected to a whole grid and that grid is you you are the grid you are protecting all of those points which are vortexes which are energy points which are dragon lines you're the naga that protects the grid that little cross is but a tiny piece of the full grid if you keep extending it and keep crossing you have more crosses and more grids to protect and who is protecting the grid my naga Who's protecting the grid? Remember that cross is a mark. It's a sign. It's the letter Tau. The last letter of Hebrew is a cross. Just like the Andrews shield, right? The Rus, same thing. It's the grid. Let's go. So they're interpreting this Preston John as a Christian king because he's whooping up on the Sultan. He's keeping him in check. So the Christians are feeling allied to this Negro king this king of the Indians. Remember how they started it? In 1122, a mysterious man calling himself John, patriarch of the Indians. Well, these don't look, this, this don't look like the Indian today. 
this look like Naga. That that don't look like no Native American. But he's the patriarch of the Indians. And the definition of American in 1828 is the copper color race is found here. Found here by the European. Any questions, my Naga? I mean, just stare at this. Look at all the different, you know what I'm saying, tints and shades, man. You got, you know, that high gold, you know what I mean, yellow almost, and you got that ruddy, you know what I mean? Look at all the shades. Look at this. <laughs> this is Naga, man. This is the copper penny. This is copper, you dig? Huh? Huh? I'm talking Naga Knights, man. Where's your sword, man? Where's your sword? This is the patriarch of the Indians. The patriarch. Don't play with me. This ain't no play play. King David is real, but he's hiding in the timeline. We're talking 1100s. Let's go. 1122, we got this patriarch of the Indians. All right, so he had a mighty victory. They're calling him also Yellow, Yellow Dashi. You wanna see how you spell that? Yellow. Had a fight against them. Leader of the Muslim world, the Sultan Sanjar, who was utterly defeated, and Crusaders in the Holy Land interpreted this victorious Prester John to be a mighty Christian king, but really they just wanted an ally, and dubbed him Prester John, convinced that he intended to assist them defeat the Muslims in the Crusades. <laughs> so they're convinced that he's going to help them out. And what he say? I'm a dragon on the wall, Jack. We dragoons, man. Nah, man. We hijack free. We ain't no Christians. We ain't no Muslims. We're not uh no uh uh Jew Jude, uh what you call them, you know, Jewish, you know what I'm saying? Nah man, we're Nagas, man, we're the Khan dynasty. You can take your titles, you can leave them. We have ancestors, we have actual people that we connect with right here on this turf. We're talking Hiawatha. We're talking Hiawatha. You can't talk about Hiawatha. Then maybe we ain't know what we're talking about. We're talking Hawashua. Let's get it. And thus the legend of Preston John was born. Around two decades later, an anonymous European writer adopted the persona of Preston John and wrote a humorous letter describing the marvelous kingdom. This work was widely read in Middle Ages and survives in many different versions. So, it's always funny when they try to give like something as an absolute, oh yeah, well somebody came and wrote a humorous letter. Well, I'm not, I gotta take your word for it. Or are you trying to discredit, you know, the same way that the ancestors keep doing, but let's go. So there's a letter called, uh, let's see. It's in Latin, so I'm gonna show you the title in Latin. Uh, in case you read that, I'm gonna go to the English translation. But just know I'm digging on translation, let's go. And here's the English translation. Pause it. Read it. Pause it. All right, you got it, let's go. 
on the arrival of the Patriarch of the Indians to the city of Rome in the time of Pope Calixtus II during the 12th century middle, this anonymous text was first uncovered by Frederick Zarnick in the 1870s and it has since become a part of the Prester John Cannon. The Prester John Cannon on the studies. The text dates to the first half of the 12th century and deals with the journey of a mysterious traveler by the name of John from India to Rome, where he describes the marvels of his oriental homeland before Pope Calixtus. So, who's the oriental? Who's the Mongol? Who's Preston John? Who's the knight? Who, who founded the Templar? And who's the patriarch of all the Indians? And who's the Oriental? Let's go. See, you see the connection. All right, let's go. In ancient times, the custom is read to have been the studies of good events were to be committed to memory and plainly presented in the written word, because anything made so well or done so eloquently or elegantly will be reckoned as nothing, unless afterwards a description or explanation pleases the next man. For what will it benefit if virtue, advantageous to men, lay hidden and do not shine through by strong, clear example? Indeed, the clarity of a gemstone covered over by darkness will remain hidden unless it is revealed once the darkness has been lifted. We are lifting the veil. From here, undertaking a difficult task, although we seem unworthy, we have nevertheless taken care to communicate to future men those very amazing things which were told about the Apostle Thomas and our time at Rome, lest they lay hidden for future generations through carelessness, man. Lest they remain hidden from future generations we are unsealing the book let's go so at the time of Pope Calixtus the second specifically in the fourth year of his papacy in 1122 may you know that something worthy of being remembered in new annals took place in the Roman fatherland truly when the patriarch of the Indians arrived in Rome specifically that India which makes up the farthest end of the world. I'm out of here, man. Body bag, Daniel. Body bag for the illusion. What else you want, man? It's Keegan Brewer, the legend and the source is breaking down that there's more than one India. You Nagas come from the India that occupies the farthest end of the world. My Naga, that's 1122. When did they roll up on you? For real, for real. For real, for real, man. That's all you need to know. I could put the book down. You can go get it. That's all you need to know. Is that there are more than one Indias. India is a vague term for just an area of copper Nagas. Right? Now, there's more than one. You live in India, what they call Superior. I have maps. We've shown maps showing North America as India Superior. Many, you know what I'm saying, researchers have shown maps showing America as India, Tibet, uh, Cathay, all these things, Katai, the Kara, the Kara, the Carolinas, the Kara Katai, which is Cathay, Katai is Cathay, Katai is Cathay, let's go. 
I love the Jackie Anthony. What does the Kitai have to do with the Hittites? Man, I'm trying to tell you, man, we just surfing away. Truly, when the patriarch of the Indians arrived in Rome, specifically of that India, which makes up the farthest end of the world. Read it, man. All right. I just need you to read that, man. Okay. The farthest end of the world. With his coming, he performed a miracle for the Roman court and almost all of Italy to wander at, since no one had come here from that place through the course of innumerable years. This is the first time they've seen a Naga. They said, wow, you different, man. You, you got a different vibe about you. For real, for real. What's good, Priest King? I mean, we're hearing all the rumors of your conquest over the Sultan. So he comes with miracles. Miracles, man. Remember we got the Daniel walking on water? Oh, we're gonna talk about that again out the Benjamin of Tadula. Daniel's walking on water. He turns invisible. And King, or excuse me, David. King David is walking on water in the Benjamin of Tadula. Page 17, go get out the drop library. Password is one, two, three, four. Get you through the dome. Come hijack free. He's walking on water, man. He's being held by the king of Persia. They go to seize him. Well, he gets thrown into a dungeon or jail for like, you know, for life. He gets thrown with a life prisoner, so he's done. He gets put away for life. His life is now over. He's dead, right? His life is over. He's he's put in jail for life. Ask anybody in jail for life, you know what I mean? They would say that part of my life is dead. I have to start a new life, right? Now, in three days, he rises from the dead. <laughs> he gets out of prison miraculously. He shows up in the king of Persia's court. This is in the Benjamin of Tudu. Rabbi Benjamin. All right. King David shows up in the king of Persia's court. After three days of being thrown away with life in jail, so he rises from the dead in three days. And then they go to seize him. He says, I'm out of here. He turns invisible, just like the Hobbit, you know, with or, or you know, Lord of the Rings. He turns invisible, just like Solomon, David, get it? He turns invisible, just like Preston John said, he got rings that make him invisible. Knights, King David. 1100s, I'm still talking the 1100s. So you see how important the 1100s are? Do you see how important the 1100s are? Why is it not in your consciousness? Why you're not aware? You don't think it matters? You think it just doesn't matter? It's dark. It's dark ages. Nah, it's Naga ages. It's the Naga ages. It's the Copper ages, man. David, they... They follow after him. He takes off his shawl, throws it on the water, and proceeds to walk on water. And they go after him in boats, and they can't catch him. That's King David in the 1100s, as told by Rabbi Benjamin of Tadula. Get it out the library. So what I'm saying is, if you know that David, if Hosea 3 and 5 is telling you, you're going to wake up, seek your creator and David. Then you're talking Mashiach, right? That's a Mashiach, right? As Joshua is a Mashiach, Moses is a Mashiach. We have Mashiachs. This particular Mashiach, the scepter will never depart. The scepter will never depart from Judah. <laughs> and the scepter will never depart from King David. The Naga Knight. Where's your sword, my Naga? Oh, it's in the museum. It's in the British Museum. They got all your Naga swords. All right. You might, you might want to go check it out. Let's go.
So truly, when the patriarch of the Indians arrived in Rome, specifically of that India which makes up the farthest ends of the earth, America, let's go. With his coming, he performed a miracle for the Roman court and almost all of Italy to wander at, since no one had come here from the place through the course of innumerable years. No one's come here from America, man. So by you even coming here, to them, that was the greatest miracle. It gave them hope that there was more shit to conquer. It gave them hope that there was virgin land out there that they can go to, just like they want to go to uh, another planet. Oh, we're going to terraform another planet and go fuck that shit up. All right, cool. Well, we from Earth, my niggas, so, you know, y'all... Y'all niggas get out of here, man. Us Nagas is gonna hold this shit down. You know what I'm saying? Because we from here. You can't just come fuck our shit up and then talk about flying the fuck out of here. Like, come on, man. I mean, I'm just being real with y'all, man. It's craziness. It's asinine. It's very parasitic. It's very, it's a parasite mentality. I'm gonna fuck your shit up and leave. Nah, man. You're gonna, you're gonna have to get this work, man. You're gonna have to get this Naga night work, man. I don't think it's play play. I mean, you read Isaiah chapter 11. So you occupy the farthest ends of the earth. This miracle that he came from that place through the course of here from that place through the course of innumerable years. No one had, had come here from. No one's come there from America, man. Wow. Nor had anybody from such distant lands and barbarous regions ever been seen throughout almost all of Italy besides this aforesaid patriarch John of blessed life. John the baptizer, right? He got the fountain of youth. He's dipping his people, turning them back to the age of 32 every time. That's a real baptism. John the baptizer, John the baptist, you see he's written all throughout their New Testament in different variations. He's King David, he's John the Baptist, it's all the same. He's Jesus, rising in three days, walking on water. Oh, what a great story, let's go, let's go. Nobody in Italy has seen no Naga. This was like, huh? They've never seen this face, y'all. They've never seen this face. This wasn't from Africa. There was something different. He had a different vibe about him. Oh, I'm just talking about the red man. I'm just talking the red man. The ruddy man. The ruddy man. <laughs> All right, man, let's go, man, before I go crazy. You know, you got to read it. I got to read it this way, y'all. I, I can't just speed through this. I'm not trying to read 20 pages and then say, look, do you remember all that? Shit? Nah, man, I'm trying to really, like, get it. I'm getting it with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get what this shit is saying? You think this is, are you entertaining? You just having a good time? You know what I mean? Are you getting what this is saying to you? They've never fucked. They've never seen you before. It's a miracle. So what do you think they said when they came to a land full of Nagas, Indians, after hearing about the patriarch, the chief, the priest king, King David, Dawu, Lemna Dangle, Raja Haraja Chola, all whooping up on 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 uh, Persia, Sultan, all that. Psalms 83. They found you and they said, oh, praise our God. We've, we've arrived. We're never leaving. We're never leaving this place. We've heard so many great things. Please, uh, Montezuma, take us on a tour. We need to see everything. There's so much we've, we've so much we heard. You guys are so amazing. Now I'm gonna kill all y'all niggas. Now I'm gonna take all of you. Now I'm gonna rape your women. Now I'm gonna poison you. Now I'm gonna take all your kingdom down. No, we just need a little bit more land. Let's do this treaty. 
at uh, Hopewell. Let's do the Treaty of Hopewell for the Cherokee. You know, who wasn't down with the treaties? The Chickamauga wasn't down with the treaties, man. The Chickamauga Cherokee said in 1785, nah, boss, nah, boss. They followed their priest king, who they're calling Dragging Canoe. Dragging Canoe. Dragging Canoe led his people out of harm's way into a new land. They went from Tennessee, higher, the Overhill Cherokee, to the Lower Cherokee in Alabama. Did they cross any water? We got to put all this shit. We got to put all this shit together. Let's go, man. We're going to put it all together. So check it. So, nor had anybody from such distant lands and barbarous regions ever been seen throughout almost all of Italy, man. Nobody from America has been seen, man. None of these kinds have been seen, man. They just heard about your heaven. They heard about your paradise. And here we are. You think I'm crazy. I'm the Naga still in my land. I'm still in my land. I'm looking around and you think I'm crazy. Because I should just accept this shit. It should be cool with me. How do you think he would feel. How do you think he would feel? You might call him crazy too, right? So they see nobody from such distant lands. Indeed, if anyone wishes to know the reason for his visit, may he know that it was this. With the death of his predecessor, the patriarch of the Indians of happy memory, the patriarch of the Indians of happy memory, all the Indians were calmly brought together and they eventually elected him high priest, although he was unwilling and for a long time resistant as is proper. Then, after the custody of the holy place, they have finally been given by election to this aforesaid patriarch John. So that's their story of, you know, of course, it's always going to be an abstraction for these people. He began to diligently inquire about how he might at some, at some time come to Byzantium as procedure demanded in order to receive the pallium and the other insignia of confirmation and rank. Now when you dig on this rank, the title of Preston John is high above any kings anywhere. So if anything, in reality, he's just coming to check their ass because he's, he's King Day, you know what I'm saying? So he's just coming to check him like, you know, what's popping? You know what I'm saying? And when he talk about the Byzantine, remember, the Byzantine Empire was taken out in 1453, one year after the 1452 Doom Diverses Papal Bull, right? So who was the Papal Bull targeting? What empire was attacked immediately? The Byzantine Empire was taken down in 11, or excuse me, 1453. That's before 1492, right? So you see the attack. You can get a perspective of all the Naga attacks across the plain. And these are the vortexes, right? This, this is the grid. These are the lines. You put the cross in there, you got a bunch of crosses all over the place because there's a bunch of vortexes all over the place. This is the earth plain. We have vortexes. We have areas, you know what I'm saying, that we are indigenous to let's go then with god's favor after the space of a year he arrived at his destination greatly fatigued from such a long journey while delaying there a while as is the habit of a royal rank he came to the attention of the roman leg legates 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 whom the aforementioned pope calixtus had sent to constantinople for the benefit of mutual peace and friendship Keep hearing about these treaties of peace and friendship. Let's go. Between Roman and Greek kings. Their conversion with the aforesaid John, patriarch of the Indians, was extremely unclear. So they don't know shit about shit. Because neither did he understand what the Romans were saying, nor did the Romans understand what he was saying. That Naga was speaking Naga. He wasn't trying to talk like them. He wasn't trying to master their English. Come on, man. 
but with the introduction of an interpreter, listen what they call this interpreter. But with the introduction of an interpreter, which the Greeks call a dr a drago man. You think I'm making it up? I don't know. Where is it at? Where's my drago? Oh, there we go. Alright. Drago man. Drago man. The Greeks call a drago man. <laughs> Okay. Can't make this up. So why would the Greeks need this dragon interpreter to speak to Preston John? You saying Preston John was speaking dragon? Come on, man. The Greeks call a drago man. Damn, damn, damn. We're talking dragons, man. All right. Now we got out of here before that the Nagas play with their dragons by pulling them by the tail and and they treat them and the dragons are like like cows amongst them or dogs to them like they're just that obedient to these nagas because those are your those are your joints those are your partners man that's your wall of protection that's your wall of protection man so the, the greeks call them a drago man they began to question each other on the respective conditions of the romans and the indian region and of the indian region when in turn, the variety and nature of the Italians had been sufficiently inquired into, and he had realized that according to God and the dignity of the age, Rome was the head of the entire world. Come on, it's hijacked. He immediately undertook to entreat the Romans to take him with them to Rome so that he could see with his own eyes these things in Rome which they had described to them. So if anything, he's like, oh, okay, so y'all the y'all rule this this little area here? All right, man, let me take take me to that spot, man, so I can really see what's popping. You know. And perhaps when possible, report back to the Indians whence he had come. Indeed, the Romans did not refuse this, but having settled the matters for which they had been sent, they set out to start the journey together with him. Then after so much effort because of the distance of the trek, they finally reached the walls of Rome. After he arrived and learned the truth of the promises, he was seen to jump for joy exceedingly and to praise God, who had made him worthy of such a great sight. Come on, man. They want to Christianize, but then they say that they don't know nothing at the same time. But after this, he was, he was interrogated by the clergy and Pope with frequent questions about the remarkable affairs of his Indian region. Indian man, Indian man, with the Romans, which the Romans were ignorant of, but especially about the miracles of the most sacred Apostle Thomas, so he must be rocking in America, which glowed from him there after the departure of his human flesh and glow there until now. So they're saying that this sacred apostle glowed, which glowed from him there after the departure of his human flesh and still glow. So he's just glowing, glowing on him, shining on him. Then on a certain day and by no means a small group of clergymen and lay people congregated in the Lateran Palace in the presence of the Roman pontiff, Pope Calixtus II. There with the Pope and his court present and commanding it, the aforesaid patriarch of the Indians, speaking through an interpreter, began to describe his native land. Quote, the city which we are in charge of by the Lord's grant is called Hulna, H-U-L-N-A, Hulna. Indeed, it is the head and mistress of the Indian 
kingdom. So they're calling this land Hona. Right there, Hona. Right. Indeed, it is the head and the mistress of the Indian kingdom. It is large as four days journey from side to side. Truly, the thick walls in which the city sits is such that two Roman chariots joined together can easily ride upon them. And so great is the height that it seems tall compared to the loftiness of Roman towers. He's like, man, this ain't nothing. Our, st our stuff is tall compared to the loftiness of the Roman towers, man. We, we, we got towers that are shining on you. We got towers that have a whole nother perspective, man. <laughs> there with the Pope and his court present and commanding it, the aforesaid patriarch of the, of the Indian, speaking through the interpreter, was describing his land, calling it Holna, the mistress of the Indian kingdom. All right. It's as large as four days, journey from side to side. And so great is the height that it, it seems tall compared to the loftiness of Roman towers. Through the middle of the city, the Pisan, the Pisan, Pisan. So you got the Pisan River. All right. How does that connect with Eden? One of the rivers of paradise, there we go, <laughs> flows with the clearest water. So he's telling you that paradise is here, the Garden of Eden is here, in the farthest India, at the ends of the world, in India Superior, which is America. The definition of an American in 1828 is the copper color race is found here. So my Naga, they found you in paradise. Big facts. They just found us in paradise. Now it's the American dream. They've divided our land. They've polluted our land. They've massacred our people. And they want us to forget about it. That's the sad thing. You destroy Israel. You destroy Jerusalem. You destroy Jerusalem. You destroy Israelites. You destroy priests and cons, and that's forgotten about. By who? Whose God tells you to forget your massacre? Our creator, our Hawa, our Wah! Framer and Shaper tells us to remember. Remember our deliverance. Wakey wakey season, redemption season. The last part I'm gonna get is this. We're gonna make our dismount. We out of here. Peace and power. Shabbat Shalom. I hope you had a wonderful Pesach, wonderful Passover. You got your alkaline week, man. Happy Al alkaline week, man. It's an alkaline week. You got the alkaline and you remember your deliverance and you alkaline why you did it. No yeast for a week. Come on, man. Can't nobody fade life. Our customs give us life. No matter what you think about. It. Let me take, let me see you have a whole nation of people to take a whole alkaline week together. Go. Without copying it from us. Can you dig that? Let's go. So he said, the city we're in charge of is called Holna. They got the Paisan River. One of the rivers of paradise flows with the clearest water, sending forth most precious gold and most precious jewels from which the Indian regions are most, are made most wealthy. And within the entire city is completely inhabited by the most faithful, they say, Christians, come on, man, in America, in the paradise. So we already know, Nagas, right? The most faithful Nagas, Khans. Among these, no wicked or faithless man can ever dwell. Can't no wicked man dwell with the Khans. We hijack free. We dragons on the wall, baby. Can't no wicked man dwell. We got dragons on the wall. Hey, you got to get a... You got to get a Draco man to talk to me. Bring your Draco man. Maybe we can, you know what I mean, have a common perspective, you know what I mean, so you can know what I'm saying.
Get your drag old man, man. We're talking priest king. We're talking press of John. Among these, no wicked or faithless man can ever dwell, as history relates, without coming quickly to his senses or collapsing dead in an unforeseen end. Peace and power, man. This is Preston John, number 37. And it feels good to vibrate. It feels good to uh, collect the bricks by bricks, man, to, to make it this far on our journey, man. You, you've seen us overcome adversity. You've seen us overcome adversaries. You know what I'm saying? You've seen us eat the rut, man, and, 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 and not just take the high road, but just take the take take the reality road you know what i'm saying take the road to where we know that if you go down that road there's a low bridge sign you gotta you driving a you a truck driver <laughs> you driving a tall truck that road right here has a low bridge sign it's letting you know don't come down that road your truck can't fit down that road so that's reality it's not an you know, uh, interpretation, it's not an opinion, it's reality, the Creator's commandments are reality. If you kill, if you take a life, you know what I'm saying, unjustly, you know what I mean, you already know. So, it is what it is, we, we got rules and regulations, we have a priesthood, so all we're doing right now is remembering who we are. Looking down that road, saying, if I do go down that road, I might not want to drive a truck. Facts. You know, it's like saying, uh, this, the road is going to end, it's going to run out in one mile. That's a fact. If you go down that road, the road is going to run out. There's going to be no road. You're going to drive off the cliff. Now, what we do very well is we line up hijacks and we boot their ass off the metaphysical, magical cliff bone of Mount Shasta, you know, every night in the ether, you know what I mean? We, you know what I mean? We do it together. Because being hijack free is not a hobby, it's a lifestyle. And when we're live together every night, it's not like YouTube, it's all good, but you know, we're doing it at the same time. Like right now, y'all watching this video at different times. You're not witnessing together. You're not witnessing as we're speaking, as we're digging on this. This is what, this is, this is just what we do. This is just what we do. We just pick it up and dig on it, you know. It's, it's our natural design, so for the illusion to be unraveling, we know that it's unraveling by design. We know that Daniel 12 is in effect, and we know that, you know, being hijacked free, when, when we witness and get those bad vibrations off of us, that's, that's all we're talking about. A hijack is just negative energy. Everybody ain't a hijack. You know, some people are just an asshole or something, you know what I mean? But someone that truly has the energy to destroy and not build, that's a hijack. And all that energy that you get bombarded with every day, come on over to the drive, come dig on it, man. We live at 10 o'clock Pacific every night and we boot these hijacks off, man. We just visualize it. We say, four, three, two, this is Sparta. You hear the hijack falling, man. It's crazy, man. It's a crazy experience. We do it every night, man. Surf the wave challenge. Be a dragon on the wall. Be a wall of protection. Stop hijacking people with your thoughts. Just like it says in the Nag Hammadi, the teachings of Sylvanus. I'm just talking to Texas. I'm just talking Solomon, the builder. He's letting you know that your thoughts are the evil wild beast. Get the robbers out of your head. Get the robbers out of your gates. Control that. And you will control your destiny. Much high peace and power and vibrate up and ether up a hive to the ether squad. Shabbat.